Hi, it's Jennifer. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial with you from my book, The Secrets of Coloring. Today we'll be doing the Wolf Eye tutorial. If you'd like to get the line art for this particular tutorial, go to moderncoloring.com forward slash books and you can download a free sample. There is also a written PDF of this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoy. Happy coloring! Products used in this video can be found on my Amazon Influencer page. The link is under the video description. Um, okay, so what I would suggest that you do is get your paper out, get all your pencils organized, and um, we're going to get started. So the first thing that I have recommended, and hopefully I have all my colors here, um, is to take a brown pencil, and I'm just going to make like a little... Um, Demar a little demarcation of um, where the the light is going to meet the dark line of demarcation that's what I was trying to say where the light is going to meet the dark in other words where the shadow that hangs over the eyelid of this wolf will be in here and then this is going to be the lit area over here so I'm just drawing a little sort of bent line to indicate the two sides and if you read this book and if you go into the section the parts of light you will see that I'm constantly referencing that, <coughs> the, the light versus the shadow. Okay, so the first step, and by the way, today I'm using my, and I do not have this one listed, I need to list this on my um, influencer page, um, my Maypad um, sharpener. I also use a Tegall sharpener, they're both great sharpeners. I do like them both, but this one has a really cool little, um, thing if you break off a lead inside it it has a little button that'll eject it so make sure your pencils are nice and sharp and what I would do what I would recommend that you do to start is use your canary yellow I'm using number 916 and I am going to basically on the left side of the iris which is the colored part of the eye this whole thing here is the colored part of the eye um, I'm going to fill this in gently using kind of like small circles and this is the first step in the book on the left side. I'm going to go a little bit lighter as I move to the right slightly. But this is mostly um, going to be the lightest part right here. And the reason that I'm putting this yellow right here is that you can see this little notch right here cut out of this will be the pupil. If you look up here to see this for reference. The light is going to travel through the eye and when that happens it goes through and comes out the other side so this is directly below this is like opposite of the highlight which is the the area that is um, closest to the direct to the light source okay so and that's why why we have a highlight so that's why this area over here is going to be the brightest so I'm just adding this little bit of yellow and we can always go back in and you know intensify things a little bit more and then um, step three is to add a little yellowed orange, which is 1002. Okay, 1002. And you can see my pencils are really old. These are old Prismacolors. I've had some of these for, I have new ones too, but I've had some of the oldest ones I've had for 30 years, and they still work perfectly. All right, so with my um, uh, yellowed orange, I'm going to go all the way to the left and overlap the yellow just a little bit. And then I'm going to fill in the whole right side. So <clears throat> and how many of you guys are doing this with me? I hope some of you are. And by the way, this will be up on, um, as far as I know, this will be left up on in Coloring Co-op, uh, Modern Coloring Club, and <clears throat> on my artist page. So you can come back and watch it. But this is how all these tutorials in my book are set up. It tells you what to do for each step. It breaks it down into baby steps so that it's not overwhelming. I know people get overwhelmed real easily. All right, so there's my left side of the light side of the iris. And I can always come back in and intensify a little bit later if I need to. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of contrast 
I'm going to circle under the pupil. I'm going to use this Burnt Ochre 943. And again, if you're using a different brand of pencil, we're looking for like a basic yellow, a yellow orange, and I would call this like a light rusty color, okay? So you can really use any brand of pencil you want. I have proven here with a $25, um, you know, pack of pencils that you can do that with any kind of pencils. I just prefer my Prismacolors. And why do I prefer Prismacolors? Because the color, first of all, they have such a, a great variety of pencils. There's like 150 pencils, pencil colors to choose from. And their colors are very intense and they stay intense. Um, so I like the way that they come out of the pencil and they are they look like they do on the lead and you know, um, that's really important. And that's one little thing, that's one little issue that I do have with this, um, and I don't have a good one here to show you, this Speer Farben Company that has beautiful pencils. I can't tell if that's black or if that's brown. It's really hard to tell. Um, and here's a good one to show you. This color does definitely is not the exact same as you know the color on the lead. Some of the colors are a little bit different than the, the bottom of the pencil. So just be careful, just make sure you're looking at the actual lead. So I'm actually um, adding just a little bit of contrast around the pupil. And by the way, this part I'm going to lift my pencil and kind of go like in little strokes around the pencil because it'll make it come out a little bit more like the shape of the eye. Um, we call that directional coloring. And if you want texture, if you want it to have like the texture, if you look at somebody's eye up close, and you want it to have that texture, then leave some of your lines showing. If you don't want to have that texture, you can always go in with a blender and get rid of it. Okay, so that's how I'm doing this. Um, and then I'm going to, it's basically just on the right side here that I've done all this. And then I'm going to fill in this part, the top section where the shadow will be. I'm not going to go too heavy though simply because I'm gonna to need to add some more color there. And if you read my book, um, The Secrets of Coloring, you will learn about tooth, which is a term that describes paper. And tooth is the amount of um, basically texture. It's kind of like how much it can hold. So every piece of paper has little, um, um, steps in it basically that hang on to anything you're applying to it and at a certain point it can't hold anymore it's filling it up it's kind of like driving in the snow with snow tires eventually you know if you don't have like real high tread tires they're gonna get filled up um, same kind of goes for paper so I'm just filling this in lightly because I'm gonna go over that with a darker color later okay so that was my um, 943 the next step step six tells me to do some, oh, sorry, my 943 again, tells me to do some patches um, within the eye to give it some character. Now, if you want it to look perfectly smooth and you don't want to do this, I will tell you that Prismacolors are soft. And this is where people complain about them because you can't get as crisp of a line as you would if you used polychromos or another hard oil-based pencil or a Verithin made by um, the same company as Prismacolor. But if you use a razor sharp tip, like I recommend that you do in the book, you should be okay. It shouldn't be that difficult. Um, if you want to add some texture here, I like to add a little bit because I think it looks kind of cool when you do. I'm just going to add some patches to make this eye look, to me, a little bit more realistic. And notice I'm kind of curving these lines and I'm doing what is called hatching, which is leaving a texture by drawing an actual line. I'm not blending it by drawing circles. Okay, so there's a couple little patches, so I've given it a little bit of character. Now I'm going to add my chocolate, 1082, and I'm going to start filling in the top a little bit more, but again, I'm going to add some more darkness to this. I'm just trying to, instead of using flat, plain black, this is going to increase the dimension of the eye. We want this to look rounded and real, so to do that, I'm going to use multiple colors. People don't understand that you can't just make a shadow out of black. There are other colors in shadows aside from just black or gray. So I'm filling in this, but I'm being careful not to not to go too hard because I know I'm going to go back in with some black in a bit. Okay. Um, 
but it does look really nice to have these little like rusty tones showing through. And if you want to, you can increase, you know, the contrast here a little bit. You can, you know, go around here if you want. Some of this is up to you. I'm, I put in my book, I didn't write it, but I actually added a little bit down here as well, um, just to increase the contrast a little bit. But you don't have to, I mean, it's up to you. So here's my black pencil, my 935. And again, I like a nice sharp pencil, and I would recommend that you, and I just broke a lead, so let's eject it. Hopefully that ejected. Yep. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to start filling this in. And you can do, you know, sort of a combination of little circles and um, directional lines. I guess I kind of do here. I like, because it's a big shape, I like to go in the direction so that I don't see little circles all over. But I blend in between some of those directional lines so that it covers some of it up. Okay, this is about as dark as I'm going to go right now, and I can go back in a little later and darken if I need to. I'm just sort of blending this um, shadow out just a little bit, just so it sort of reads as a softened edge over here. Okay, um, <clears throat> moving along, step nine. No, am I on step nine already? Oh, bottom edge of the iris, sorry, this is still step eight. I'm going to kind of color in this bottom edge of the iris here a little bit with black. You can use some of the browns. I kind of do like a combination. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dark gray pencil, whoops, which is my 1065, and I'm going to start filling in some of this, the skin of the eyelid. And because this eyelid is hanging over this part, we know this part is going to be in shadow over here. Whereas this part on top could be in shadow as well just because the fur is sort of sticking out over it. Or you could have it lighter. It's up to you. But in the book, I did make this part darker. And then I left this bottom area in the center over here. I left that a little bit lighter. And I'm just kind of going around and filling this in. Now this is like part of the tear duct over here and I'm going to just sort of make a couple little bumps on it. Kind of making little circles over here and here. Okay, and then I'm gonna fill the rest of this in with gray. And I am going directionally right now. If you want perfectly smooth lines, you can go and use um, your blender. I do have the Karan Dash um, blender pencil here. I use, most often I use my Prismacolor blender pencil. I don't like to use a blender too much though. I'm very careful not to. I think sometimes it depends, but I think sometimes it actually, um, makes things lose their character. And I like to see a little bit of pencil stroke in there to know that it's not just done digitally. Okay, so here is the gray. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. Oh, let me just see. How are we doing here? Let's see where I am. I'm on step nine right now, so I just finished that. And the, oh, the last step, part of step nine is I'm going to, making sure that my pencil in the next couple steps is a little, is sharp. I wanna, I wanna create some fur coming from this eye that kind of blends in with it. And you wanna start from the top and pull it down. I've given you these lines in the direction that you probably wanna use your pencil. So You can add more or less depending on how dark you want this wolf to be. And I kind of blend it into this section over here too. Um, eventually I'm gonna want to create kind of a, a bit of a shadow area under here like I did with this eye here. So 
so I'm going to darken this part by adding more. And then I'll just go back into it with my other colors later. So you can sort of watch here as I'm doing this. And I'll stop babbling for the time being. Now, on the opposite or the the top of the eye, because I'm starting, um, I'm trying to get hair that is moving this way. I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. And something that's really important while you're drawing that I have not been doing and I should be is turning my page because it will help you to create a more um, accurate drawing and to get into little places like right here. I wouldn't be able to get into that if I were had my page turned the other way.
we're getting there, right? So because the light is sort of hitting over here, I'm not gonna put as much black because if you think about it, light would be coming down from here, right? Hitting the fur here. And then the, if this area is like where the eye socket is that sticks out, this would be darker over here. So that's how we establish that um, shadow area. That's how you do it. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of rust even though I didn't put it in the book because um, I did this one with a little bit more rusty colors and you know I would love to compare a little bit. See how these pencils do in the end. Oops, these things go rolling. So I had a hard time with some of those, but the colors themselves, using them, they look great. They worked out really well, actually. So, I'm just adding a little bit of um, flat color over here just to fill in this white spot because this would still be kind of in shadow. Now I'm going to go back in with my black a little bit more, deepen and darken a couple areas, and sort of follow along what I've done before. So we are at about step 12 right now, um, and I did mention in the book to use the flicking motion. Um, from bottom to top over the eye and then from um, top to bottom under the eye. Okay, and then the next step is going to be, I'm gonna actually go back before I do anything else and I'm gonna um, add a little richness to this color because I feel like it's not that quite there yet. I'm going back in with my 943 and just deepening this tone right here. going around the pupil. Now if you want it to look oranger, which this one does, then you'd have to actually use some orange pencil, which I do not have on my supply list. I do have this yellowed orange, but it's not going to be quite as orange as what you see above. Because that is a different brand of pencil. and I used what I could. Um, Helen, these, these pencils are Prismacolors, but um, this one was done just to see if it could be done easily using the Spearer Farben pencils that are all over Facebook right now. And I'm gonna intensify my yellow a little bit too. I feel like it's not quite there. And I'm turning my paper so that I can more easily access a couple of these other spaces that are harder. I like to draw sort of towards me when I'm doing like curved lines, as you can see. So it makes it a little bit easier to do that. Now I'm gonna deepen this shadow one last time. It's sort of a back and forth. Um, and it's all in the book, but um, you know, obviously there's a little bit of, for each one that you do, it's gonna be a little bit different. Everybody's gonna have a slightly different experience. So if it doesn't look quite right yet, then just go back in. I'm gonna add a little bit more intensity on this side, and then I think I'm gonna call the iris about done, with exception of um, the pupil and all that stuff. Now. The next step that I had recommended, um, which was step 13, is to use eggshell, which is 140, and to kind of go in and get rid of a lot of this white by blending it all. Or blending some of it, I should say. So, whoops, sorry, I'm out of the, the screen there, out of the frame. I apologize, I do that sometimes. So this eggshell color just kind of ties everything together. You can go in above here and kind of tie it together too. 
And wolves come in different colors. I mean, you could do, you know, like an Arctic wolf that's mostly white. Um, so you can use these in different ways. You just have to look at reference photos. And, um, you know, um, there's some recommendations in my book for um, websites to find inspirational color schemes, stuff like that. Okay, so this is coming together pretty well. I'm just going to add a little bit more depth in here by adding my black. And pen, it's a waterproof pen. You can use that as well. I use, I did, I just used the um, colored pencil for this one here, but I do think it gives it a richer effect. However, I do want to warn you that if you're doing this directly in the book, you always have to pay attention to what supplies you're using. So, a waterproof pen might go through the paper. Okay, so if you're going to do that, um, obviously you're going to want to put a blotter. Just, which is just like an extra piece of cardstock or something beneath it. So that way it'll catch whatever ink. Um, I have intentionally in the book, I've left every coloring page, as you can see, every coloring page is blank on the back. It's got a white back. So um, you're not going to ruin anything on the page behind it. It just might be a matter of, you know, bleeding through the back. So just be careful with that. All right, so I'm just going to fill this in. Fill in this black shape here. I do like the richness of this, I will admit it, which is why I attempted to do it, to use this as opposed to just a Prismacolor. Um, and I'm gonna take a second and just go in and use a blender and just kind of tidy up a couple of these little areas because they are bothering me a little bit. And again, you can do, I have seen people um, in the past couple of weeks doing a couple of these eyes, and I've seen some of them that look like perfectly smooth, and they look so cool. And that is totally a matter of choice if you want to use a blender, but they look really cool either way. I personally, for me, when I'm doing them, I don't use as much blender, but that is a personal choice. I might just use a little bit here and there. And you always have to be careful to clean off your blender in between, otherwise you're going to contaminate your colors. All right, so I think that's enough blending for now. And I'm going to, to do the final step here, which is to add my highlight. What did I do with my highlight? My white. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm usually much more prepared. Oh, here it is. It just rolled away. Okay, so I've got a Uniball Signo pen. And hopefully this will work. It was giving me a hard time when I was trying to go over the Spear Farben ones. So I'm going to just basically create a white circle here. Like this. Okay. And some people like, like to do a second circle and some people like to do like the window sort of reflections where you see the little pieces, the little lines. So you do however you want your reflection to look. I do talk about that in the book. Um, another cool thing that you can do is you can create a shape for a reflection. Which actually the reflection, by the way, comes right where the end of the shadow is. Okay. And a really cool thing that you can do with the reflection, if you don't like the reflection that you've done, let it dry for a second. Sorry. And then you can use um, a colorless blender. You can go back in and carve out some areas if it's like a little too much somewhere or if you need to reshape it. So you can see I just did that there. Ta-da! What do you think? It's done. Okay, so you can see the difference in color a little bit. Um, 
there are orangier colors in this one. And I, can, I could make this orangier if I actually used orange, um, but I did not for the Prismacolor one. Okay, so, but um, you can, the, the Prismacolor I think is a little less, um, it's a little, actually a little harder than the other pencil that I used. This is a little bit, um, I, the only word I can think of is melty. I don't know how to put it. I feel like you go through pencils a little bit faster when you use this, this brand. Um, <clears throat> so that is how it works and there you have it. And, and again, th these are all from my Secrets of Coloring book which is available on Amazon.